May 30, 1431, Rouen, France. A girl of 19 is taken by soldiers to the stake where she'll be burned alive. She's been accused of heresy, witchcraft, and of all things, cross-dressing. The first two charges are bogus. Of the third offense, she is guilty and proud. She's tied to a pillar with logs stacked below her. Her bare, tender feet graze the planks. A Christian cross stands in front of her. The fire is lit. Smoke bellows into the young woman's face. The monstrous flames tickle her feet, flicking around her ankles like a serpent's tongue. In seconds, she's engulfed by an inferno. What are to her enemies the purifying flames? The skin melts from her face, and she's done. Her name was Joan of Arc, or Jeanne d'Arc, to her friends. What you might be thinking now is, wow, that must have been one horrible way to die. After all, we guess most of you have gotten too close to a flame at one point in your life and howled out loud. Burning hurts, even if it's just your fingertip getting too close to a grill. We can tell you this, after today's show, you won't want to mess with fire again. But what about young Joan when she was standing in the middle of the conflagration? How much did that hurt? How long does it take to die from burning? How does it actually kill you? Just how burned do you have to be to die? Can you survive a full body burning? All will be answered shortly. Ok, so we should first tell you that Joan of Arc didn't die from being cooked to death. It was the smoke that killed her. The Cardinal of Winchester saw that parts of Joan still vaguely resembled her, so he ordered her to be burned again. After that, he noticed some of her organs were stubbornly hanging around, so he ordered a third fire. Only then was he content that she'd been purified. The whole trial was in fact a travesty of justice, but that's another story. Being burned to death as a form of execution goes back to ancient times. It has been in vogue at some point just about everywhere in the world. The Romans wrote that the Carthaginians burned very young people as a form of sacrifice, and that might seem like Roman fake news propaganda to put people off their enemy, but modern archaeologists have backed it up. It was the Romans that said the ancient Druids of Gaul had perhaps the worst sacrifice of all, maybe even matching their own brutality. Damn hypocrites. That was the use of the Wicker Man, a term you've likely heard before but you might not have known its origins. This was a multi-story kind of sacrifice, an all-in-one execution consisting of a bunch of innocent people packed into a giant man made of wicker. Folks would be stuffed into the effigy's torso, legs, and arms, and then the entire thing would go up in flames to the sound of screaming. That's what the Romans said anyway. Some people think it might not have existed. There's no shortage of stories relating to human burning as an execution. In Europe during the witch trials which spanned from 1450 to 1750, maybe around 40 to 50,000 women were killed, many of them burned at the stake. In England during the Middle Ages, a woman might have been burned to death for counterfeiting cash, killing her husband, or even getting in on the wrong side of her superior. Hordes of people would turn up for this day out so they could watch as the guilty gal screamed on the pyre. We should say it happened to men too, but not for high treason. For that, they were hanged, drawn, and quartered. The English thought it was bad manners to do this to a woman, so they politely burned her. Ok, you get the point, we have a lot to go on when we're talking about this as the worst way to die. It was common, if not absolutely brutal. Generally speaking, when the fire was lit, the condemned person had enough time to get a few words out before the flames were stoked by the fanning of the wind. Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, accused of treason and heresy, managed to say this before he bit the dust. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, I see the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Another accused English heretic, Richard Snell, went up in flames fast. His executioners piled straw around the pyre and added some gunpowder and tar. As the flames grew, he became engulfed in smoke and he shouted, Christ help me! A minute or two later, he could still be heard whimpering, and then there was silence. In 1726, Englishwoman Catherine Hayes was burned for being part of the murder of her husband. In her case, she was supposed to be strangled first, as often happened, but the fire was lit too early. It was said she filled the air with her cries and lamentations. In 1727, Scottish woman Janet Horn was burned at the stake for witchcraft. Her neighbors had accused her of turning her daughter into a flying horse so she could ride it to the devil. For that wicked transgression, she was arrested, covered in tar, paraded through the streets, and then burned. It was a horrible way to die, and many times the people weren't heretics or treasonous or even criminals. As for witches, they don't exist and have never existed, so thousands of women were burned when they were innocent. Some people thought it unfair that for regular crimes, not treason, men were usually hanged but women were burned. How is that okay, they said, because the former is way worse than the latter. After a woman named Margaret Sullivan was burned in England in 1788 for counterfeiting coins, the Times newspaper wrote, there's something so inhuman about burning a woman. No kidding. 
Another person wrote that it was a disgrace to the enlightened sense of this country. A year later, the last woman in England was burned. In the case of executions like this and how they went, you have to consider the size of the fire. If it was a very small fire, then the experience was absolutely horrendous. People don't generally die when the lower half of their body is on fire. The good thing is, if we can even say there's a good thing, is that once the nerves are destroyed, the pain goes in that area, but still, the flames keep crawling up the body. What would happen in most cases is the person would die from suffocation before they literally cooked to death. This might only take a few minutes. It sounds strange, but the best thing a person could hope for was a very smoky fire and lots of that smoke entering their lungs. Still, the initial flames on their skin must have been excruciatingly painful. Well, we know it is, but we'll get to the evidence soon. Say a person breathes in a lot of fumes and passes out and dies. What happens next? Well, the soft tissues of the body will contract. Skin tears, muscles and fat will shrink, as will the internal organs. All this shrinking and contracting will make the body's joints flex, and that's why people who've died from being engulfed in flames will often look like a charred person in a regular boxing stance. The term they use in forensics is the pugilistic stance. But as you know from the story of Joan of Arc, the body doesn't just turn to ashes. Some bones take longer than others to burn, and the fire has to be strong to burn everything. The body helps because it becomes fuel for the fire, but still, a total cremation will only happen under the most extreme heat. But what if a person is burned all over, almost to the point of death, but actually survives? In that case, a person might die a few days later after the deed is done. In 1969, Czech student Jana Palach set himself on fire in protest of the Soviet occupation of his country. He was taken from the public square where he performed the act and was rushed to the hospital. There, doctors said he could talk, he could think, but he could hardly breathe. He died after several days. The reason some burn survivors can't breathe is their lungs alveoli fill with smoke and then they suffocate slowly. It's a terrible way to die, and you could argue a much worse way to die than going out on a pyre emitting 10-foot flames. To really know that this is the worst way to die, we can't really go on screams alone. What we have to do is listen to someone who came to the point of death but survived and was well enough to talk about the experience. Many people fall unconscious quickly when they're in a fire, but in 1999, after a young woman in the US was hit head-on by a drunk driver in Texas, the fire took its time to burn through the car where she was trapped. When a cop arrived, she said, she was screaming and moaning and wailing, an almost inhuman sound that I never heard another person make. She screamed so much that he hoped God would take her and end her suffering. She survived, but the skin on much of her body melted away from third-degree burns. When they finally got her out, she was still moving and still moaning. She spent the next 10 months in a coma. After countless surgeries, she got her vision back, only to look at herself and think she was a monster. I miss my body, she said in an interview. And while she felt stronger, she said she wasn't so keen on everyone staring at her. She died in 2019 of cancer. Sorry guys, this all sounds very grim, but it is a worst ways to die video. Then there was a kid from Texas who was burned over 80% of his body as a two-year-old after a candle set fire to the blankets he was wrapped in. His case is unusual, but not unique. We'll get back to him, but first you must know this. Some of you will know there are first, second, third, and fourth degree burns. You've likely all had a first degree burn. You know, when you're scalded by hot water or maybe even sunburned. It hurts, but it's not much of a worry. Second degree burns affect the lower layer of skin, so that might lead to blisters and swelling. Third degree burns affect the deeper tissues and nerves. Fourth degree burns go even deeper through the muscle, sinew, and bone, and that might lead to the person losing the affected body part. Third and fourth degree burns are the most severe, but because the nerves are dead, they aren't the most painful. With less extreme burns, the nerve endings are exposed and very sensitive, but when burns are more serious, the pain will feel at first like a duller pain on the inside. Now we get back to the kid in Texas. His face was burned beyond recognition. The fire had burned right through parts of his body. The fact that he survived is a miracle. Because he suffered fourth degree burns to parts of his body, he lost a number of appendages and his eyes. He survived though and he hopes he'll get his vision. At age 16, he said, I'm sharing my story to inspire people and show them that miracles do exist. He's hoping in the future to become an interpreter or even a motivational speaker. Still, his life is hard. That's the thing about being almost burned to death. The recovery is brutal. We're quite sure that after hearing all this, you agree that burning is one of the worst ways to die. Could dying be any worse? Watch another episode in the series and you'll find out. Now you need to watch this. What happens to your body in a coma? Or have a look at this. Why it would suck to live through the end of the universe.